Sup y'all, and welcome to Economic Development and Globalization, Part 2. In this video, we're going to be looking at certain models of economic development and ask this essential question. How did the world diverge between developed and developing states? So essentially, we're asking, how is it that some countries and regions are so developed, so healthy, wealthy, and wise, whereas other countries and regions are not? Some individuals have pondered the same thing and have devised models to predict and explain this divergence. The first one we'll investigate is the modernization model, also known as the stages of growth or the ladder of development. This is the classic development model created by Walt Rostow back in the 1960s. It's what's known as a liberal model that suggests each country is able to develop in the same way, much like all human beings follow the same path of maturation from infancy up to adulthood. Models like these suggest that economic disparities between countries are the result of short-term inefficiencies in local or regional markets. Rostow claimed that countries would develop through five stages, the first being the traditional society. In this stage, the dominant activity is subsistence farming. The social structure is rigid and unchanging, and there is much resistance to technological change. Just as in the demographic transition model, there is no existing country in this stage. However, some regions within some peripheral states are at this level. The second stage is preconditions for takeoff. Three important facets for change happen at this juncture. First, there is a slow shift from primary to more secondary activities and jobs. Secondly, investments are made toward industry and infrastructure leading to more productivity and allowing for more growth to occur. And thirdly, the country expands its outlook to an international scale, increasingly trading and negotiating with foreign nations. Many peripheral states are in this stage, such as many within Sub-Saharan Africa, as is the case with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The third stage is takeoff, which is characterized by rapid and sustained economic, political, and technological growth. Usually specializing in a few industries, the country experiences something akin to an industrial revolution, where growth and change become second nature, as opposed to strict adherence to old traditions especially with the emergence of an entrepreneurial class. Countries that fit in this category are the tiger cubs, such as the Philippines. After the relatively short takeoff stage, the drive to maturity is a long and sustained period as technological and societal modernization spreads from a few centers to the rest of the country. Economic diversification allows the country to produce many goods that were previously imported, and their international presence continues to expand. Many of the BRICS countries are in the States, such as the People's Republic of China, which has many modern and productive cities, yet still possesses many places along its interior that lag behind with regard to health, wealth, and education. Finally, many core states have achieved the age of high mass consumption, in which the majority of people experience high degrees of health, wealth, and education, as well as modern technology in virtually all reaches within its borders. According to Rostow, these states are typically capitalist democracies, where the population can choose how they want to spend their resources. Countries like the United States have been in this stage for decades, whereas others, like the Four Tigers, have recently achieved this status. Since no theory is perfect, problems do arise with the modernization model. Rostow based his ideas on the Western democracies of the mid-20th century, and it is unlikely that all countries will follow the same path toward development. For instance, since MDCs have relatively low population growth rates, the markets for low-cost manufacturing grow slower now than in the past. Rostow's focus was at the national scale predominantly and didn't fully investigate the nature of international competition. Rostow's model also contends that countries always progress forward, whereas it is possible for states to fall backward, which is largely the case of Russia since its devolution from the Soviet Union in the 1990s. Further still, there were no MDCs by today's measurement when the industrialization process first began, and these states today often set trade agreements in their favor. Connected to this, most LDCs and NICs are still dependent on the MDCs to use and consume their goods. And this brings us to the dependency theory. This is a structuralist model, meaning that regional developmental disparities are viewed as a fundamental feature of the global economy. The theory states that political and economic relationships between countries and regions of the world control and limit the economic development possibilities of more peripheral areas. 
Colonialism caused colonies to become dependent on the imperialist powers. This dependency helped sustain the prosperity of dominant regions and the poverty of other regions, even after decolonization occurred. The theory further contends that core countries engage in neocolonialism, where the rich countries dominate the poorer states through economic means as opposed to the old system of controlling them politically. An example of this is through dollarization, where some lesser developed states have abandoned their local currency in favor of the exclusive use of the U.S. dollar. This has occurred in countries like Ecuador and El Salvador. Since poorer economies are often less stable than richer and more established ones, this is seen as a way to further their own development. And even though core states often receive a bad rap for their influence on developing countries, they do fund non-governmental organizations like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to provide these regions with grants and loans, which support development and can reduce dependency. A term has come into being to describe the core states through the acronym WEIRD, standing for Western, Educated, Industrialized, Rich, and Democratic. Most core states fit this description, but the term also describes how most populations residing in developing states are very different from the populations in the core. All told, the modernization model and dependency theory are based on generalizations about economic change and pay little attention to differences in culture, politics, society, and... Geography. Uh, yeah! Emmanuel Wallerstein, an American social scientist, was influenced by the writings of Karl Marx, author of the Communist Manifesto. Marx contended the history of the world could be essentially boiled down to class struggle between the haves and the have-nots. Marx stated that under the capitalist system, the haves, or the rich, who were always smaller in number, would not willingly share their wealth and power, thus constraining the development of everyone else, the have-nots. Capitalism led to the unequal distribution of wealth and led to things like imperialism and neocolonialism. The solution, according to Marx, would be a world of pure socialism, which is communism, where no one possesses property and everything is shared, where everyone contributes, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. Of course, the only way to do this would be through bloody revolution, and never mind that everywhere Marxism has been attempted, the result has been massive human rights violations, famine, war, and poverty. Nonetheless, Wallerstein, influenced by Marx and the dependency theory, viewed the capitalist world that Rostow championed as the main hindrance to the development of poorer regions. And this was the basis for his world systems theory. The first basic tenet is the world economy is a single market with a global division of labor in which corporations can draw from labor markets around the world. Secondly, despite the existence of around 200 states, everything takes place within the context of the world economy. And finally, these states are aligned along a spectrum of three tiers, the core, semi-periphery, and periphery. The core contains populations with higher degrees of health, wealth, education, and technology. The periphery contains populations with lower health, wealth, education, and technology. And the semi-periphery has both core and peripheral processes occurring within and outside their borders. They may be exploited by the core states, but in turn exploit the periphery for their own benefit. Wallerstein contended the capitalist world prevented all states from being equally wealthy, and the surplus value from trade and labor flowed unequally from the periphery and semi-periphery to the core. Furthermore, countries do not develop in stages. Rather, the entire system does. So, while technology and development will improve in peripheral states, the core states will improve as well, maintaining their dominant position. Nonetheless, the relationship is interdependent. For instance, the core depends on the periphery for cheap goods, and the periphery depends on the core to purchase their goods. A final attribute of world systems theory is that it can be applied at different scales. For instance, we have mostly been viewing this theory from the context of the global scale where the United States is a core country within the world economy. However, the core periphery concept can also be applied at the national scale, where, for instance, Bosniwash is a core region within the United States. And we can zoom in even further, to the subnational or local scale, where New York City is a core area within the Northeast, or where Manhattan is a core area within New York City. In sum, these are all models and theories. They provide us with different means of viewing the world around us. There are supporters and critics on both sides, between liberal and structuralist models. While the truth may be somewhere in the middle, 
where exactly that middle resides is subject to change over time and always subject to change depending on people's perspectives. Well, 